Like a good idea. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is a <clears throat> theoretical computer science seminar at Jagiellonian University. Uh, today, our speaker is Zdenek Dvořák uh, from Charles University. Um, well, Zdenek is, uh, well, everybody knows Zdenek, I think. Um, he's an expert in structural graph theory and graph colorings. Uh, I think also in algorithms, right? And computational complexity. I, 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 I know some results of yours. Uh, we are very glad that you, that you joined us again uh, today. And uh, please, the floor is yours. <clears throat> okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, right, uh, so in today's talk, I would like to speak about well-known Borodin uh, Kostočka's conjecture, and uh, I will actually not show any great results. Like I will show a couple of small results of mine, but uh, I would like to give by basically present a lot of open problems that I have been sort of unsuccessfully considering. So if you want to give them a try, you are more than welcome. Uh, by the way, uh, is the sound okay? Can you hear me fine? Or, yeah, good. So, like the basic motivation for Borodin con uh, Kostočka conjecture comes from considering the relationship between the chromatic number and the maximum degree. So, it's obvious that uh, every graph of maximum degree delta can be colored using at most delta plus one colors. And uh, the famous theorem of Brooks says that uh, uh, you can actually decrease the number of colors by one to delta unless your graph is either a clique with delta plus one vertices or an odd cycle. So if uh, the maximum degree is at least three, we can ignore this odd cycle case and say that ju just that uh if the uh if, if if we don't have the obvious obstruction the clique of size delta plus uh, delta plus one we can always color using delta colors and uh, now there is this natural like step if we are able to decrease the number of colors once why not try to do it again and uh, uh, so Borodin and Kostočka conjecture that actually if you restrict yourself to delta at least nine, then a graph of maximum degree at most delta is delta minus one colorable if and only if its clique number is at most uh, delta minus one. So if, uh, it's not, if this is not prevented by having clique of size delta or delta plus one. And uh, kind of uh, let's 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 discuss why why there are like certain elements in this uh, in this conjecture. Well, first of all, why we have this here this assumption that the, that uh, we do it only for delta uh, at least nine. Well, there is a counterexample with delta equals to eight. If you take five triangles. and join them into a five cycle and at like all possible edges between the consecutive triangles in the in the five cycle then this graph has uh, has uh, maximum degree uh, maximum degree eight so each vertex here has two neighbors in its part and three neighbors in the previous and next parts. Uh, also, it has independence number two, because of, 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 of course we can choose the vertices to an independent, only one vertex to an independent set in each part. And also if I choose this vertex here, I cannot take any vertex in this part or any vertex in this part. So the best I can do is take two vertices. And I have 
I have 15 vertices, so the chromatic number is always at least number of vertices divided by the size of the dependent set. So it is at least 7.5, and therefore, because it's integer, it's at least 8. And uh, uh, the largest clique here uh, consists of uh, well, taking two consecutive triangles. So the, uh, the clique number is is uh, is uh, essentially six. So uh, uh, so so we see that uh, that we cannot cannot go below uh, below nine here in this maximum degree. And uh, also, if we would like to again just forbid uh, forbid cliques. We cannot go to uh, delta minus two colors. So you cannot cannot say if the clique number is at most delta minus two, then your graph is delta minus two colorable or sufficiently large delta. Uh, a counter example is uh, you take. You take a five cycle. And it's complete join with click on delta minus four vertices. Uh, so now the maximum degree is indeed indeed delta. Each vertex here has uh, delta minus uh, five neighbors inside the clique and five neighbors in the five cycle. And uh, uh, the clique number is uh, delta minus four plus two, so delta minus two. But you need to use three colors here and delta minus four colors here, so don't, uh, don't get delta minus two coloring. And uh, well, so Origin Kostochka conjecture is kind of open, so actually it was. It, it depends if you are if you are a mathematician or a real person. So, for for a mathematician like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Reed proved it's it's true for uh, delta at least uh, ten to the hundred, which is kind of like okay. For a real person, it might be of interest that this means that it is not. Uh, that, that we cannot actually like prove it or like uh, this, this does not give us anything for any realistically any realistic graph but uh, I mean who cares but still it would be nice to uh, uh, to actually prove it completely uh, for delta at least nine okay so let me comment a little bit still on whether you can kind of improve the conjecture or not. So, okay, so we, we have seen here that if we just forbid cliques, then uh, then uh, then uh, that we cannot go below delta minus one, but uh, maybe we can forbid something else. So we have this, this like one extra graph that we can forbid, or maybe we can state some other simple, uh, other simple condition. So, uh, I should have here delta minus. No, okay. Uh, may, may, actually, both, both kind of make sense. So, one uh, one is uh, one is uh, uh, one is trying to do something better for delta minus two. One is trying to get rid of this assumption that delta is at least nine, maybe by let's say forbidding this this graph. Okay, three times c five or some other graphs or some simple condition. And so can we can we get a a result which would not have any such assumption on a small or on large maximum degree? And uh, the answer is kind of no. So as long so if you are trying to improve uh, improve uh, improve this to uh, delta plus one minus k coloring, and k is sufficiently large, at least roughly square root of delta, then you cannot do it. Uh, I mean, at least there, 
is not any kind of simple characterization by let's say bounded number of forbidden sum graph or anything like that because actually then the problem is np complete so i mean depending on what you believe that uh, this this implies that it's not even checkable testable in polynomial time but at, at the very, uh, very least it implies that uh, uh, that there are like infinitely many complicated counterexamples, and uh, so in particular, if, if for this uh, for this basic case that uh, that you would like to like improve porodin kostochka conjecture uh, by getting rid of this assumption that the num uh, that uh, maximum degree is at least delta, uh, you cannot do it as long as uh, oh, k is two here, so as long as delta is less than six. And uh, Molloy and Reed actually showed that uh, this bound uh, this bound here for for k is uh, is actually the, the the kind of the right one where the things change from hard to simple. So at least for again for sufficiently large delta they proved uh, that if you are coloring using this number of colors where k square plus k is at most delta then you can decide this problem in polynomial time and in fact uh, if uh, if if this inequality is uh, is sharp they actually showed that uh, Delta plus one minus k colorability is actually characterized by just forbidding finitely many or uh, finitely many subgraphs. So they prove that there exists some bound on, on the number of uh, number of vertices depending only on k and delta, such that a graph of uh, maximum degree at most delta is delta plus one minus k colorable if and only if this is true for all of its subgraphs with at most this many vertices and well since there are always like just finitely many graphs with this many vertices which are not delta plus one minus k colorable you can actually state a theorem which uh, which which tell which 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 says that a graph is delta plus one minus k colorable if and only if it does not contain f1, f2 up to fm as, uh, as, uh, as subgraphs. So in particular, uh, this first result uh, result implies that kind of the porogen kostochka conjecture can be strengthened to delta six being at least six or more so at least if for delta at least six or more if it's delta is large now you can uh, you can test whether your graph is delta minus one colorable or not in a polynomial time but uh, so we can we can kind of let's say like the first problem like whether you can actually get this algorithmic strengthening of, uh, of borodin kostochka conjecture to hold in full. Can you get a polynomial time algorithm for delta minus one coloring where when, uh, when uh, delta is just at least six? We know that we cannot do it for delta five or four, but for six, it might be possible and larger six, larger, larger values of maximum degree. Okay, so let me do some more remarks on Borodin Kostochka conjecture. Uh, the first remark is that although the Borodin Kostochka conjecture asks you to prove this statement for every maximum degree at least nine, it is actually, it would be actually sufficient to prove it for graphs of maximum degree exactly nine. And uh, one way how to prove it is use uh, 
Missiorem of uh, Andrew King from 2011, uh, which says that if the clique number is sufficiently large compared to maximum degree, then the graph contains an independent set, which actually intersects all the largest cliques in your graph. So if you delete such an independent set from your graph, you have just deleted or uh, destroyed all the largest cliques. So the clique number decreases by at least one. And uh, you can, without loss of generality, assume that this independent set is maximal. You cannot add any vertex to it. So the neighborhood of every, the closed neighborhood of every vertex contains an uh, a vertex of this set. And so also deleting this independent set decreases uh, the maximum degree. And so from this, you clearly get an inductive argument showing that uh, if Borodin Kostočka conjecture holds for delta minus one, it also holds for for the for delta, because you take uh, take uh, your graph of maximum degree degree delta, find this independent set which intersects all maximum cliques, de uh, delete it, you get a graph with maximum del degree delta minus one, but also decreased clique number. So by the induction hypothesis, well, well with Borodin Kostočka calls for delta minus one, you can color it using uh, delta minus one minus one colors, and then you can use one other color for the independent set, and so you will get coloring using delta minus one colors. So. Uh, actually, like the the uh, the case of delta equal nine is is the hardest case. If you can solve it for delta equal nine, you have it solved completely. Or if you can solve it for delta equal forty nine, you can you know know this is true for all graphs of maximum degree forty nine or more. Uh, another remark, uh, actually, the, the bound uh, that uh, on on the number of on the number of uh, uh, vertices in in this uh, theorem of Molloy and Reed, which tells you that there are just finitely many obstructions, is uh, is quite uh, is quite good. And so, if you uh, work with it a little bit, you realize that if you want to, uh, to decrease the number of colors by one, if you want to do delta minus two coloring, then in addition to a clique of size delta minus one, the only other graph that you need to forbid is the one that I've shown before, the complete join of k delta minus four with c5. And that, so by the theorem of Molloy and Reed, this is sufficient for a huge delta. Uh, so again, in the spirit of Borodin and Kostočka, you can ask like how small can you get with uh, with delta? And I mean, obviously, this is at least as hard as proving uh, proving the Borodin Kostočka's conjecture, probably. So this may not be the easiest problem to work on, but anyway, it's a natural thing to consider. Uh, the third remark considers list coloring. So in the ordinary coloring for every vertex, we can uh, we have the same set of colors that we can use for it. In the list coloring, every uh, every vertex, uh, let's say in k list coloring, every vertex gets a set of k colors that it can use. And we ask whether there exists a proper coloring where each vertex takes a color from its set. And we say that a graph is K choosable if you can actually get such a list coloring for every assignment of lists of size K to the vertices. And uh, uh, we don't have any, any counterexamples to the borodin kostočka conjecture in the setting of list coloring. So it's natural 
to ask whether it's actually true that you can replace in Borodin Kostočka's conjecture this word colorable by choosable. I have seen it attributed to Borodin and Kostočka. It's not stated in their paper. I am fairly sure Sasha Kostočka thought about this, so it's reasonable to say that he probably may have stated it some way, some, sometimes in this form, but I am not completely sure about that, so I'm not sure how, whom exactly to attribute this uh, this question to, but it's been considered. And uh, actually, uh, Joy Kirstedt and uh, Rabern in 2012 uh, proved it again for Delta large enough, so it is in the similar status as, uh, as, the, uh, as the normal Okay, so I mean, I cannot prove Borodin Kostočka's conjecture and I don't really have any hope of being able to do it. So um, what uh, what can we do? So as, uh, as usual, if we can't prove a statement in full, we can try to try proving it or some special graphs with some additional constraints. Uh, or we could uh, we could try weaken the uh, the statement a bit and uh, let's say instead of just forbidding cliques of size delta forbid some smaller cliques as well or we instead of uh, normal coloring we could use we could consider some other notions of coloring which uh, like weaker notions of coloring so let me like discuss kind of each of these possible research directions. So uh, there has been quite a lot of uh, research done on Borodin Kostočka in special graph classes. So for example, we know that it's true if you consider claw-free graphs, graphs that do not consider this subgraph as uh, this, this as an induced subgraph or for P5, C4, induced subgraph free graphs, or for odd hole free graphs, and so on. There are like a lot more of these more or less weird combinations of subgraphs that you can, induce subgraphs that you can forbid. And uh, none. Yeah, so, so uh, right, so for, okay. So, Obviously, there are now like, well, infinitely many problems of this form that you can consider, and uh, not all of them are very reasonable. So let me suggest two that I consider to be kind of like worth working on. Uh, one is what happens if you if you just forbid induced pass on five vertices. And... Uh, now, uh, someone was maybe telling me at some point that uh, this is actually solved, that someone proved that uh, Borodin Kostočka holds for uh, induced P5 free graphs. But uh, when I was trying to look for the paper, I couldn't find it. And I kind of like had had a look at papers which, which cite whatever the, this paper and so on, which so which this, pa this paper would, would pull it for P5 free grass presumably would do. And uh, I couldn't come up with anything. So I'm actually not 100% sure what is the status with P5 free, but certainly P6, induced P6 free is open, but, uh, but P5 free might be open as well. And, uh, so why, uh, why is this Kind of, uh, kind of interesting. Well, there are like, there is a fair amount of research done on like P5 free, P6 free graphs for the, for the coloring, like uh, in terms of uh, of the complexity and so on. And uh, it seems like a fairly, fairly reasonable class of graphs to consider. Another another problem which was uh, suggested by uh, by uh, Roskank, uh, what if we tried to forbid cycle of uh, length delta now as as a subgraph? 
now this this is kind of an interesting problem like uh, of course if you forbid cycle on on delta vertices this uh, this also implies that that the clique number is less than delta because because clique on delta vertices contains a cycle on delta vertices so actually forbidding uh so you can you can just now formulate a conjecture that if you forbid cycles of length uh, of length delta then the graph will be delta minus one colorable you don't have to mention the clique separately so it should be a significantly simpler problem than porodin kostochka conjecture but uh, on the other hand uh, when we were thinking about it, like we really couldn't come up with uh, anything very reasonable here. And in fact, uh, there are some things which work for Borodin Kostočka and uh, are not obvious here. Like for example, that uh, uh, validity for delta minus one implies the validity for delta because you can do it for cliques using the result of Andrew King. You, I don't know whether you can do it for forbidding uh, forbidding cycles of length exactly the maximum degree. But uh, but this seems like like this might be a, like like an interesting special uh, like simplification of Borodin Kostochka's conjecture to consider. Okay, so let's say that much for. The special graph classes. I'm not all that huge fan of this direction of research because there are so many different things that you can consider, and uh, it's questionable how many of them actually make sense. Uh, so let's have a look at uh, this uh, other direction. What if we forbid not just cliques of size <clears throat> uh, uh, del delta, but what if we forbid some even smaller cliques. And uh, there is, uh, it's, uh, it's been long, long known that uh, it's uh, sufficient to forbid cliques of some, fairly, uh, some, uh, some size, depending on delta. So actually in their paper where they come up with the conjecture, Borodin and Kostočka came up with a bound, which was also independently found by, by Kathleen. Uh, which uh, is uh, as follows. So if you have some uh, teachers P and D, where D bounds the, uh, the, the clique number and P times D plus one strictly bounds the maximum degree, then your graph is D times P colorable. And the argument is actually fairly, fairly easy. Uh, you simply divide your graph into P parts. So that the number of edges that go between the parts is as large as possible. And now I claim that if you have a look at subgraph induced by each of the each of the parts, its maximum degree is it's uh, must be at most D. Because if here you had a vertex of degree, let's say at least d plus one, it must also have at least d plus one neighbors in every other part. Because if I had at most neighbors here, I could take this vertex and move it to this uh, to this part. And this way, I would increase the number of edges between different parts. So this cannot happen. So I have to have at least d plus one edgy, uh, neighbors in every other part. But then that would mean that my degree is at least uh, p times p plus one, which is not possible because I'm assuming maximum degree is smaller than that. So each part uh, induces a subgraph of maximum degree at most D and also of 
obviously of click number at most D. So I can use a Brooks theorem on each of the parts. So the subgraph in each of the part is decolorable. And if I use this joint set of colors for each part, I get D times P coloring. And so, for instance, from this, it follows that the Borodin Kostochka conjecture holds for graphs which, uh, which have a clique number less than, let's, let's say, half the maximum degree, the delta minus one over two. So, uh, if uh, if uh, if delta is odd, you can just select this to be uh, to be d and plug it in here. And if uh, delta is even, you can first uh, use the Andrew King's result to uh, to to decrease uh, the maximum degree by by one, and then apply this result. But uh, it has been also long known that that uh, that this is not uh, not the best restriction on the clique number. So it has been bound like roughly on the order of two thirds of the maximum degree or three fourths, three quarters of the maximum degree. But uh, recently, uh, Cranston and Treburn proved that it's actually enough to forbid cliques of size delta minus four or whatever, the minimum, uh, irreasonable minimum degree, a reasonable maximum degree, at least at least 13. So that's uh, that's nice. nice, certainly. It seems like it might be a way to go to try to at least uh, improve, uh, improve this result. But the problem that I would like to say is, uh, is a little bit different, like what happens for list coloring? I mean, this all of the, even the the argument of uh, Cranston and Reburn is kind of a modification of this uh, of this argument. It starts with some partition like this. They take a coloring like that, and then they do some recoloring argument, and and they they somehow manage to win with these uh, with these cliques of uh, of, 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 of um, parallel art size. No, I'm 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 cheating. I. I don't exactly know how the argument goes, but it uses some tricks like that. So, but that absolutely does not work for list coloring. For list coloring, this uh, this argument, I will use this joint set of colors on each part. Just uh, just breaks completely. So we don't know anything reasonable here. I think for list coloring, so coming back with some with some argument that would work in that setting would be nice. Okay, so we have seen what what happens at uh, forbidding uh, still fairly large cliques. So what happens if we forbid very small cliques? What happens if we go to forbidding, uh, let's say, triangles? Well, then obviously we know that Porotin Kostočka holds in that case. Uh, I mean, there is uh, there is this uh, there is this theorem of uh, of uh, Johansson that shows that triangle free graphs in triangle free graphs actually even this choosability this list chromatic number is on the order of delta over log delta which for delta sufficiently large is obviously much better than delta minus one although the uh, the, uh, the argument is probabilistic and only or only works for fairly large uh, large delta again so uh but uh, but also if you if you use uh, if you use this uh, this observation with uh, with d being uh, d being this you uh, realize that every triangle free graph is roughly three quarters delta uh, delta colorable so from that you can uh, you can you can see that uh, every triangle free graph of maximum degree delta at least seven is delta minus uh, one colorable. And uh, again, it, uh, it, uh, to me, it makes sense to ask if, uh, if, if you, if you do this kind of like extreme weakening of, uh, of Borodin Kostochka conjecture, where you like forbid all cliques or all, all cliques of size greater than two, 
how large delta I do you need to be able uh, to conclude the delta minus one colorability. And we know that uh, delta seven works for coloring, but again, using this argument, which depends on the partition of color set. For the list coloring, the best we can do is uh, delta 12, which we did with recently with uh, David McShining, a student of mine. And uh, this is basically a taking one of the recent proofs of this uh, uh, Johansson bound using uh, uh, this Rosenfeld's counting method and uh, using a little bit of a computer assistance to uh, like actually compute things precisely instead of just finding uh, finding approximate bounds. And then it turns out that the argument works already for delta equals 12. So although it is probabilistic argument, kind of, it is a very simple probabilistic argument, and uh, and it turns out that uh, that it works or for fairly reasonable uh, maximum degree for triangle-free graphs. Uh, but actually, it seems that much better would be true. So Reed has this nice conjecture uh, that well we know that that we have uh, these uh, these upper bounds that the chromatic number is between the clique number and delta plus one. So maybe it's at bounded by the average of these two bounds. So the conjecture that uh, every graph is delta plus one plus omega over two rounded up, colorable or even list in the list coloring well version choosable. And so if this is true, then in this case, we have uh, omega equals to two. So this saves us one color already for delta equals five. So delta equals five could be the right answer. Delta equals to four is not the right answer because there is, for example, this Hvatal's graph, which is triangle free as maximum degree four and uh, chromatic number also four. Okay, so finally, let me discuss the possibility to uh, consider less restrictive uh, forms of coloring. So, for example, the fractional coloring. In uh, in the in the normal coloring, you are assigning a color to each vertex. In the fractional coloring, you will be assigning sets of colors to each vertex. So, to each vertex, you need to assign a measurable set of colors of measure at least one. And similarly to the normal coloring, the adjacent vertices should get this joint set of colors. And uh, we are trying to minimize the set of uh, the, not, uh, the amount of colors used. So the measure of like all, all colors that appear in, in at least one, one vertex. And uh, so obviously uh, this, gives you a relaxation. You can use at the most as many colors as uh, the ordinary color uh, coloring if for each color that is used by the ordinary coloring, you use this joint set of colors of measure one. Uh, it's also lower bounded by the by the clique number because on all vertices of on clique, you must use this joint, uh, this joint set. So their union will have measure equal to the size of the clique. So here and uh, here is an example showing that uh, you can use like smaller number of colors in the fractional coloring. So here is say this, uh, this graph, which uh, uh, where, where I mean, I'm as the, as the color set, I am using this interval of length eight over three and each, uh, to each uh, vertex I am assigning uh, well, uh, some subset of this interval of length uh, of length one. And uh, this turns out to be a, a best coloring in this case because again, 
you can easily see that fractional color for fractional coloring again we have this bound that it must be at least the number of vertices divided uh, by by the independence number and in this graph has eight vertices and independence number three so you cannot do better than eight over three coloring and so people have considered like whether you can get some result al along the lines of Borodin Kostočka's conjecture or fractional coloring so maybe in the fractional coloring setting you maybe do not need to decrease the number of colors by 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 one but just decrease it slightly below uh, below the below delta if you forbid click of size click of size delta and uh, King Klu and Peng uh, actually prove that uh, that this works if you forbid click click of size delta and two other special small graphs then uh, you can bound your fra the fractional chromatic number of your graph by something which is strictly smaller than uh, than delta by some nice margin and uh, unlike Borodin Kostočka or the proofs uh, here we get uh, we get this this holds for uh, for every delta let's say at least three I haven't checked two so let's say let's say for the every delta at least three so we don't need uh, this this huge low bound on delta for this to hold but uh, kind of obviously this this constant two over 67 is not uh, the best possible so it's the natural question is how far you can push this result and I mean of course for maximum degree at least nine Borodin Kostočka conjecture tells you that you can go to one certainly and uh, possibly yeah, uh, possibly if you if you decrease uh, if you for a bit larger clicks, you could maybe improve it even more. Uh, and for the the values of delta between three and eight, these are the conjectured value values for which we we actually have a graphs which have this maximum degree and this fractional chromatic number. And uh, what is what has been the progress? Well, there have been actually like a lot of uh, lot of done uh, done on this. Uh, we know that the value one over five is the best possible one for maximum degree three. Uh, and somewhat recently, when Pank improved uh, all the previous bounds to. Uh, to one over eight for delta at least four. So, uh, I mean, uh, just uh, uh, I mean, this this is a revised version of the slides. Just a couple of years ago, there there was like a long list of results here, but now there is just this single one. But here we are in some somehow kind of weird situation. So you see that uh, that this that this increase that uh, that uh, we are getting is supposed to be getting bigger and bigger for larger values of delta so the problem is supposed to be getting simpler and simpler but somehow for delta equals three we have the be much better bound than what we have for delta equals four or so so that's kind of annoying and i don't quite understand why the methods that work so well for delta equals three Work, work not so well for that like so equals four it's, it's annoying um you can also you can also ask why we can't use uh, this result of uh, andrew king here why why we cannot reduce the case of delta to delta minus one well it it has this uh, this uh, this restriction that it only works as long as the max uh, click number is uh, reasonably large compared to the to the maximum degree which starts to fail at delta equals to six you can push it a little bit up to delta equals to five 
but just this one step that that would be used for us since it's missing. So we don't know whether that the bound for three implies the bound for four. So that's again a little bit annoying. Okay. Uh, by the way, I probably don't have much more time. How how long should I be speaking? Uh well, uh, the the maximum is ninety minutes, so I think okay. it's your fault. So. Okay, so yeah, I, I can I can continue. That's fine. Good. Okay, so uh, I will not continue for ninety minutes, but uh, yeah. So we have uh, so okay. So let me let me discuss just a little bit about this uh, this case of uh, subcubic graph. So graph sub seven degree three. So kind of, it's kind of seems that the situation is completely solved here. We have this bound of one over five, which matches matches the well. There is there are there is a graph which which has fractional chromatic number exactly three minus one over five. So we cannot improve this in general. But uh, there might be some ways how to go go beyond that. Again, by forbidding additional things other than cliques. I mean, we are already forbidding some additional things here, so why not? And uh, actually, um, Heckman and Thomas considered this kind of problems for independent sets, and they, for instance, proved that in planar triangle-free graphs, the independence number is at least always at least three times the number of vertices divided by eight and uh, this motivated them to conjecture that it could actually be true that they have fractional chromatic number at most eight over three, which would imply was this, uh, of course, this bound. And uh, 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 recently it was proved that uh, actually you can you can improve this and instead of assuming planarity. You can just assume that there are uh, that that your graph avoids one of specific spe uh, specific six uh, subgraphs, which uh, uh, which are all non-planar, and then you can improve this uh, again get get this bound on the uh, size of the independent set matching what uh, Hickman and Thomas got for planar graph so because these six excluded subgraphs are, are all all non planar this uh, this implies uh, Hickman Thomas theorem and actually uh, these uh, these uh, these uh, all of all of these uh, all of these subcubic triangle free graphs that you, that you are for, uh, forbidden. So uh, have uh, have a fractional chromatic number greater than eight over three. So certainly, if you contain one of them as a subgraph, you uh, you cannot be eight over three colorable. But well, if you forbid them as subgraphs, then you have uh, independence number at least three and uh, three and over eight. So it makes sense to conjecture that a fractional, uh, a a a subcubic graph, a subcubic triangle free graph has a uh, fractional chromatic number at most eight over three, if and only if it does not contain this. Additional six forbidden subgraphs, and uh, with uh, Bernard uh, Ligitsky and Luke Postel, we made a bit of a step in the direction, and we proved uh, that uh, if you forbid two of these six uh, forbidden subgraphs, you can improve the bound on the fractional chromatic number to eleven over four. So this, in particular, implies that uh, every planar subcubic triangle free graph has fractional chromatic number at most 11 over 4 
but uh, well, already this uh, this argument is uh, again is uh, heavily used com uses computer assistance. It's quite involved, so I don't know whether whether we can push it to eight over three. I'm not I'm not brave enough to try at the at the moment. But someone someone young and energetic would maybe do it. So that much for the fractional chromatic number. Let me discuss uh, finally one one more uh, relaxed version of uh, of coloring, which is clustered coloring. Of course, you can uh, you can consider the problem for other variants of coloring as well. Uh, I don't want to discuss every single version of coloring in existence, but I think that there is a nice problem here, although. Calling it a version of Borodin's Kostochka is kind of a stretch because you actually don't forbid any clicks here. But uh, but uh, let's let me get to it. So, uh, given two integers S and A by an S clustered coloring using K colors, I mean a coloring which is not necessarily proper, but assigns a color to each vertex, so that for every color, if I have a look at any connected subgraph, which is only, which is monochromatic, which only uses this color, it must have size at most S. So in the ordinary coloring, each monochromatic subgraph is just a single vertex. I cannot have two adjacent vertices of the, of the same color. So this is forbidden in the normal. Uh, uh, so one clustered coloring is just an ordinary proper coloring, but you can consider, of course, this uh, this relaxation. So, for example, in in the this this would be this would be allowed in in uh, two clustered coloring. So, but then the neighbors of these uh, of these red vertices. Cannot uh, cannot have cannot have red colors because that would create a larger cluster. Um, so, how many how many uh, how many colors I need to get a like uh, coloring with small clustering for graphs of with bounded maximum degree? Well, I can get two clustered coloring using this number of colors. And again, the argument is uh, essentially the same as uh, I was showing quality once. I will take this, this as, uh, as, my, as, my, as, as, uh, as P and I will divide my, my vertex set into P parts so that the number of edges between the parts is maximized. Now, within uh, within each part, uh, I must uh, I must have maximum degree at most one because if I had uh, here degree two, I would have two neighbors in each other part as well, and so my my degree would be two times P, but that is greater than Delta. So that's not possible. So uh, inside each part, I have just just a matching graph of maximum degree at most one. And so now I can just color you each, uh, each part with, uh, with different color. I use red here, I use blue here, and so on. And now the monochromatic components are just edges. So I have two clustered coloring. And uh, you can reasonably easily improve uh, improve this bound to, uh, to roughly delta over three. You can use the same argument. And now inside each part, you have maximum degree two, so inside each part you have you have just a bunch of cycles. So 
So now, if you again use a single color for for every part, then you are you are not quite getting a clustered coloring because the cycles could be very long. Cycles or paths could be very long. But uh, then you can basically use uh, extra color Stenek, you muted yourself, you know? Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. At which point did I mute myself? Uh, when you were introducing a new color. Oh, yeah, right, right. Okay, yeah, so so I now, I now can can introduce, let's say, one more color. I may be cheating here a little bit. It's, I don't know go into the details, which, let's say, will form an independent set. I can do it maybe kind of at random or something like that. And uh, so, with high, with with some probability, it will break up all the uh, the, the the cycles and paths in uh, into uh, into bounded length one. Then maybe then I can use something like uh, the local lemma to show that I can actually break all the paths. And uh, and I am lying. It's a little bit more complicated than that. But basically, somehow this way you can get it to delta over three. And uh, it stood there for a bit, but then Axel, Sabo, and Tardosh showed that you can actually get it to uh, uh, to uh, delta minus uh, uh, to something slightly better, to by by at least some small positive epsilon. On uh, on the other hand. Uh, Alondin, Oporovsky, and uh, Vertigen showed a construction that for every S, uh, uh, S and delta, there exists a graph of maximum degree delta, which does not have uh, S clustered coloring using this roughly delta over four colors. So no matter la how large clusters you allow, there will always be a graph for which they are not sufficient. And uh, so now uh, there is an obvious question. So what is actually the minimum number of colors uh, that you need? So it should be somewhere between delta over four and something better than one over uh, one over three. And I mean, as long as the one over three bound stood, the upper bound seemed maybe like a possible option now with uh, with with being away from one over three i don't know what is what is actually a natural answer here so but i mean obviously this this is not the best so you should be able to improve it to something like more natural the the, the number of colors that you need but uh, i don't know whether you can push it all the way to delta over four or whether there is some construction blocking it so that is another I think interesting open question, kind of in the spirit of Borodin Kostochka conjecture, although I'm really stretching it here to just to be able to state this problem. Okay, thank you for your attention.